Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now ever since I started the Games vs Their Minimum System Requirements series a while ago, I decided to turn it into a somewhat regular feature and test out modern releases against their developer stated minimum system requirements. Now today, I was going to do Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, but Jay's two cents beat me to it ever so slightly. <laughs> so instead, I decided to change it to Kingdom Come Deliverance, a newly released game that I have been looking forward to for ages. This was first available on Kickstarter in 2014 and it runs on the Cry Engine. So on paper it seems as though it would be a pretty demanding title and to be honest when you turn those settings way up it really is. It even brings my GTX 1070 and Ryzen 5 system to its knees if I want to run everything on Ultra. Now the minimum stated specs are an i5 2500K as well as a GTX 660 for the Nvidia and Intel pairing and if you're running an AMD system then the minimum stated specs are a 7870 as well as a Phenom 2X4940. Now unfortunately I don't have a Phenom CPU or HD7870 at hand but I do have a 2500K which is still a beast even by today's standards in my opinion as well as a GTX 660. So I've chucked these two together in a system and today we're going to see how this newly released title plays on the minimum system requirements. There are definitely some performance issues to be fixed and I'm sure that since the point of this upload, if you're watching this in the future, then various patches may have come out. But of course today's upload is representative of the gameplay performance on February 16th, 2018. So let's get into it and see how this game runs on its developer stated minimum specs. So I started off with 1080p and jumped right in at the high settings. I couldn't get MSI Afterburner to work today for whatever reason, but I can tell you that the 660 was running at 90 to 100% usage most of the time. The 2500K is still a capable processor for a lot of modern games and one that can be found quite cheap now. At 1080p high, the game ran at just 22 frames per second on average. This isn't an incredibly fast paced game, so it didn't feel that bad. But when you do get into combat, expect to see drops to the mid-teens. Turning things down to medium and our frame rate creeps ever closer to that 30 frames per second threshold that still may not be considered playable for some, but you're not going to be achieving a smooth 60 here with these specs unfortunately. Low at 1080p on the other hand seemed okay, with around 30 FPS on average. Those 1% and 0.1% lows indicate some stutter, but it wasn't too bad. Playing with motion blur on will help make things seem more fluent, but it also is quite harsh in my opinion and gave me a bit of a headache. I chose the area in and around this town for the footage because it's busier areas, as you would expect, where the game is at its most demanding, but the averages were taken from half an hour of exploring the map with different settings and resolutions. So with 1080p best represented by the low settings on these specs, I decided to drop things down to 720p and see what sort of performance we could expect there. Immediately I noticed an improvement and the 2500k660 combo definitely excelled at this resolution. With 34 FPS on average and fair percentile figures, high settings can be achieved at 720p, but once again, just like 1080p, very high and ultra settings are off the table. 720p medium provided a much better experience and this seems like a nice sweet spot for this resolution. If you have these specs or similar and a 720p monitor, medium settings will likely be the best way to play this game in its current state with a 45 FPS average that doesn't suffer too much with lag or slowdown. Though don't get me wrong, there will still be some performance hiccups throughout your in-game experience, but as I said before, there are a couple of upcoming patches which may solve all of these issues. Moving on to low, and this is where we really saw a nice improvement. With 50 frames per second, the game may not look its best, but to be honest, its vast landscapes and medieval towns still stand out and offer a certain level of immersiveness. I think the developers have done pretty well with the stated minimum specs that seem to target 30 FPS at 1080p low. At full HD, I wouldn't increase things beyond that, but if you're still rocking a 720p monitor, then medium is probably your best bet. So there we have it. This has been the Kingdom Come Deliverance minimum specs test. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I don't have the AMD hardware to test how it compares, unfortunately, but I would imagine that it is quite similar. Perhaps the 1080p results 
wouldn't be quite as good. I'm not really sure. If I do come across the AMD hardware to test that out, then I'll definitely give it a go. But as for these Intel NVIDIA specs, the game runs okay. Just don't expect to be able to crank things up too high. And you'll still have an okay experience with this demanding CryEngine based RPG. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I will be back very shortly with some new Ryzen APU benchmarks for you, comparing that with some stuff. So tune in very soon for that, and I hope to see you then.